Welcome to another episode of John took a shower today and he feels so much better and his hair is also quite poofy because he had a blow dry. Chapter 5 of The Little Prince As each day passed, I would learn in our talk something about The Little Prince's planet and his departure from it, his journey. The information would come very slowly as it might chance to fall from his thoughts. It was in this way that I heard on the third day about the catas cat catastrophe of the Baobabs. This time, once more, I had the sheep to thank for it. The Little Prince asked me abruptly, as if seized by grave doubt. Is it true, isn't it? It is true, isn't it, that sheep eat little bushes? Uh, yes, that is true. Ah, I'm glad. I did not understand why it was so important that the sheep should eat little bushes, but the prince added, Then it follows that they also eat baobabs? I pointed to the little prince that baobabs are not little bushes, but on the contrary, trees as big as castles, and that even if he took a whole herd of elephants away with him, the herd would not eat up one single baobab. The idea of the herd of elephants made the little prince laugh. We would have to put them one on top of the other, he said. But he made a wise comment. Before they grow so big, the baobabs start out as a little seeking, as start out by being little. That is strictly correct, I said, but why do you want the sheep to eat the little baobabs? He answered me at once, so oh, come with me, as if we were speaking of something that was self-evident. And I was obliged to make a great mental effort to solve this problem without any assistance. Indeed, as I learned, there were on the planet where the little princes lived, as on all planets, good planets and bad planets. In consequence, there were good seeds from good plants and bad seeds from bad plants. But seeds are invisible. They sleep deep in the heart of the earth's darkness until someone among them is seized with a desire to awaken. Then this little seed will, seed will stretch itself and begin, timidly at first, to push a charming little sprig inoffensively toward the warm sun. If it is only a sprout of radish, the sprig of a rose bush, one would let it grow wherever it might wish. And when it is a bad plant, one must destroy it as soon as possible, the very first instance that one recognizes it. Now there are some terrible seeds on the planet that was at the home of the little prince, and the seeds were the seeds of the baobab. The soil of the planet was infested with them. A baobab is something you will never, never be able to get rid of if you attend to it too late. It spreads over the entire planet, it bores clear through it with its roots, and if the planet is too small, the baobabs too many, they split it in pieces. And here's a picture of the elephants. Of surprise. And here is the little prince taking out baobab seedlings. It is a question of discipline, the little prince said to me later on. When you've finished your own toilet in the morning, then it's time to attend... When you finish your own toilet in the morning, then it's time to attend to the toilet of your planet, just so, with the greatest care. You must see to it that you pull up regularly all the baobabs at the very first moment when they can be distinguished from rose bushes, which they resemble so closely in their earliest youth. It is a very tedious work, said the little prince, but very easy. And one day he said to me, you ought to make a beautiful drawing so that the children where you live can see exactly how this is. It would be very useful to them if they wish to travel some day. Sometimes, he added, there is no harm in putting off a piece of work until another day. But when is it a matter of baobabs, that always means a catastrophe. I knew a planet that was inhabited by a lazy man. He neglected three little bushes. So, as the prince described to me, I have made a drawing of the planet. I do not much... I do not much like to take the tone of a moralist. Well, the danger of the baobabs is so little understood, and such considerable risk would be run by anyone who might get lost on an asteroid. But for once, I am breaking through my reserve. Children, I say plainly, watch out for the baobabs. My friends, like myself, have been skirting this danger for a long time, without ever knowing it. And so it is for them that I have worked so hard over this drawing. The lesson which I pass on by... This mean is worth all the trouble it has cost me. Oh, the lesson which I pass on by, this means, this means is worth all, this, the lesson which I pass on by, this means, oh, the lesson I pass on by, this means, is worth all the trouble it has cost me. Mis misplaced um, comment. Perhaps you will ask me, why are there no other drawings in this book as magnificent, as impressive as this drawing of the Baobabs? The reply is simple. I have tried, but with the others I have not been successful. When I made a drawing of Baobabs, I was carried beyond myself by the inspiring force of urgent necessity. Here is a picture of the Baobabs. 
destroying and splitting the plant. Oh, little prince, bit by bit I came to understand the secrets of your sad little life. For a long time you had found your only entertainment in the quiet pleasure of looking at the sunset. I learned the new detail on the morning of the fourth day when you said to me, I'm very fond of sunsets. Come, let us go look at a sunset now. But we must wait, I said. Wait for what? For the sunset. You must wait until it is time. At first you seemed to be very much surprised, and then you laughed to yourself. You said to me, I'm always thinking that I am at home. Just so, everybody knows that when it is noon in the United States, the sun is setting over France. If you could fly to France in one minute, you could go straight into the sunset, right from noon. Unfortunately, France is too far away for that. But on your tiny planet, my little prince, all you need to do is move your chair a few steps. Then you can see the day end, and the twilight falling wherever you like. One day, you said to me, I saw the sunset forty-four times. And a little later, you added, You know, one loves the sunset when one is so sad. Why were you so sad, then, I asked, on the day of the forty-four sunsets? But the prince made no reply. And we'll continue more with this on our two chapters a day until we continue on. I love reading this story. It feels wonderful because I've waited so long to read it because I wanted to read it since day one. And I thought, no, no, you should hold on to this a little bit. And I'm glad I did. But I so wish to just read it all in one sitting with you. But we'll get something like that soon. Uh... I'm so, so soon. I have an exam tomorrow and I'm not, not worried about it. Um, she has said no one has ever failed her class. I don't know if anyone's ever failed the exam, but no one has ever failed this woman's class. Which I think is, you know, I'm also going, because I'm going with 95% in the course, but... On the whole, that should be pretty good. Oof! Ah, I talk to Jacob a lot today. About existential things. Um... Which was kind of nice, you get a bit of perspective. I can't wait to get back and talk to him. Because I spend all this time thinking stuff, then I sit down to study and I talk to Jacob for about an hour and a half, and then I get up and it's 10.30 and I want to go to bed. Mm. But, we can have good conversations when I get back, and so can you and I. The blog, flag, blog, flag. In the meantime, for you, and I will be home very soon. So sleep when, keep calm. Find a llama, carry on. And sometimes I feel like I'm going to be home soon. It's such a very egocentric way of looking at it. I'll be home, I'll be home, and you should be excited. Well, let me rephrase it. I'm looking forward to coming home and spending time with you. And I think spending time with you will be a really great thing. I've missed it for so many months. And I can't wait to spend time with you again. So sleep when, keep camp, find a llama carry on. And you and I can go on adventures. Sleep when, big and loud. I love you.